evaporator coil leaks sometimes they're easy to find like here's a big one that was super easy to find and every time i go to the supermarket i always find leaks they're always in the vegetable section but seriously evaporator coil leaks can be very frustrating and they're one of the most common places that we find leaks now one of the burning questions is what causes evaporator coil leaks and there's many different things that can cause it one of the most common things that cause these evaporator coils to leak is not pulling a proper vacuum Yes, not pulling a proper vacuum, not dehydrating that system is essential to not having evaporator coil leaks. What happens, you don't pull a good vacuum, you leave moisture in the system, especially with PoE oil, moisture turns to an acid. And that acid starts eating away the evaporator coil from the inside out. So not pulling a proper vacuum can absolutely cause evaporator coil leaks. We know that's possible because once it eats the copper away from the evaporator coil, it goes and plates itself on the compressor and causes compressor failure. So pulling a proper vacuum, again, is so very important. Another thing is gonna be efficiency. For them to make these systems more efficient, in other words, having more heat transfer in a small enough place where we can have this fit in the closet, they have to do a lot of new stuff. And one of the things they do is called rifling, where we have these tubes running back and forth, back and forth. They take these tubes and they mar it. In other words, they make it where the refrigerant will spin like a rifling effect as it goes through these tubes. By having that refrigerant spin as it goes to the tube, we're having more refrigerant touching more tubing, having better thermodynamic properties, better heat transfer. So that rifling does make a difference. So the problem is, as the process of machining that rifling effect, it leaves grooves, which are good for heat transfer. The problem is those grooves are a great place for that acid to have a starting point to start eating through that copper. So rifling is great for efficiency, but if you don't pull the vacuum, it's even that much more of a situation for causing leaks. The other thing is heat transfer again, we have better heat transfer through thinner copper. So by having these copper thinner and promotes the heat transfer. Uh, the problem is thinner copper and the rifling together has it more likely to leak, especially if you have the acid in there. Now, a lot of people also say it's because they're using thinner copper to save money. Absolutely, that's true as well. Part of it's for thermodynamic properties and part of it's to save money. Who doesn't like to save money? Everybody knows trying to save money, manufacturers trying to save money as well. Using that thinner copper not only promotes heat transfer, it saves them money. It's less copper having to be spent. Thinner copper, along with everything else, is more likely to leak. But it's not just those aspects. We have some other things to think about. Here we have aluminum fins, we have copper tubing, and here we have galvanized metal on the end plates. We have multiple different metals all right here in one environment, plus removing airflow through it, and we have moisture that condensation we're pulling off. So this is in a wet environment with vibrations, with airflow, that causes electrolysis. And electrolysis is where we have two different or two dissimilar metals together, and you have electrons moving through, and it actually causes corrosion and leaks. So that is gonna be a big issue to look for, and that's just natural with the environment that these things run in. That's why a lot of times you'll see the leaks down here at the very bottom or where these distribution tubes go into this evaporator coil, notorious for leaking in those locations because that's where it's the most wet. You're likely to have more electrolysis in that location. Another aspect we have to look at is going to be the chemicals in the house. Nowadays, we have more chemicals in the home than we ever have before. All those air fresheners you think that are cleaning the air, they don't clean the air. I'm sorry to tell you, they make the air smell good. You can choose to use them if you want. I have no qualms about whatever you do with your house, but it is an indoor pollutant, as well as all the other chemicals in our house. Formaldehydes, all of our furniture is made of formaldehydes. We also have a uh, carpet, the glue that holds it together has formaldehydes, and all these other chemicals in our house, paints and all this stuff, all that chemicals in the air moving through our evaporator coils. So those chemicals start reacting against this copper tubing and the aluminum as well. And manufacturers have done tests with these microscopic tests and actually finding out some of these leaks are coming from the outside in, where that chemical that's reacting with this is actually eating away and causing these micro leaks from the outside in. My personal opinion is you're not gonna be able to change everybody's house, make the coils a little bit thicker so they stop leaking, but that's just my opinion. And another point we're gonna talk about is technician, improper technician care. And a lot of this is people just don't know any better. But one of the things you'll see technicians do all the time is either do this or tell their customer to do this, and we want to avoid this. They'll say to go and put bleach in the drain line, and you do not want to put bleach in the AC drain line. It's great for clothes, I guess, I don't know, uh, but it's not good for an air conditioning system. Bleach is very corrosive. You put bleach in, even if you're pulling it in the drain line, those vapors can come back up in the evaporator coil. Now we have copper, aluminum, galvanized metal with water and bleach, a very corrosive 
chemical. That bleach starts eating away on this evaporator coil. I know when I go to a customer's house and I smell that bleach, there's a much higher chance it's going to be low in refrigerant and we're going to have a leak in the evaporator coil before I even put my gauges on there. Yes, I'm going to double check everything to make sure the refrigerant charge is there, but I see leaks more times when I smell bleach than any other time. So bleach is definitely an issue. Please don't recommend customers to put bleach in their unit. Now, if a customer does it after you leave, that's fine, that's on them. But please don't recommend customers to do things that hurt their systems. And bleach is definitely one of those things. Sorry to tell you some of the old school people, but bleach does not help this. They make products we can use to clean drain lines. That'll be another topic for another day, but definitely bleach causes problems with these evaporator coal leaking. And the next thing talking about maintenance is gonna be the technician who is just working on it. I see a lot of times that they'll put the chemical on here to clean it and they do one or two things. Either the chemical is the wrong chemical, it's too strong and it starts eating it away, or they don't get it rinsed off. You see a lot of technicians try to clean the coil in place. And this one's a slant coil, so it's easy to get to both sides. Yeah, it's doable. But still, if you put the wrong chemical in there, you cannot get that chemical rinsed off. So if I was to pull this out, put the chemical on here, I'd have to make sure that I washed all of that chemical off. And you'll see it takes more time getting all the chemical off, making sure it stopped bubbling, than you do actually cleaning the coil itself. But it's essential that you get all of that chemical off of this evaporator coil. And if that chemical stays on there, again, it starts eating away these fins. It starts eating away that tubing. It starts causing that chemical reaction, and it causes these things to leak. I see it way too often. Somebody didn't do a proper cool clean, ends up eating away this evaporator coil. Now when we talk about leaks, all this has been about refrigerant leaks, but let's also talk about the water leaking. You're gonna have water leaking issues. It's usually an airflow issue or a lack of maintenance where they didn't clean the drain pan. But also if you have a dirty evaporator coil, that dirty evaporator coil, the dirt on there starts eating away these aluminum fins. On this outside, we're not really worried about it, but we also have these sharp fins on the inside. And as that condensation forms, it actually rides down these sharp edges of the fins. On the inside of this coil, it rides down into that drain pan and then it drains out. We have damage on this coil, that water comes along, hits that damaged spot and then drips and it drips down past the drain pan into the house. And that's also caused from chemicals and people not cleaning this correctly. Whether they don't rinse the chemical off or they try to use a brush, it's too abrasive and that brush breaks and tears this aluminum. This aluminum is very fragile, called aluminum eggshells. It's very easy to damage it. Or the system will freeze up and somebody go in there with the hammer and ice pick trying to clean it out and it just destroys these coils. And there's nothing you can do but replace it at that point. So those are some of the things that causes refrigerant leaks. It's also mishandling. You have somebody that pulled it out or it was shipped, they didn't have the shipping bolts in and it got bounced around, had damage to it. Those are things that can cause it as well. Or even somebody putting a screw through this coil to mount something and it punctures one of these tubes absolutely causes refrigerant leaks there's many things that cause them but that hopefully gives you an idea of what can cause it because the customer is going to ask you what causes refrigerant leaks and every single manufacturer out there has evaporative coil leaks I hear people say oh uh, train coil leaks all the time all oh, the carrier coil leaks all the linen coils leaks well there's some class action lawsuits that actually went through on that but I have yet to see any manufacturer have a coil that's not leaking in the last 10, 15 years. They just are not built quite like they used to, and we have more chemicals in the house, and we have a lot of technicians that don't know the proper maintenance procedures. So all that combines together with large amounts of refrigerant uh, leaks in these evaporative coils. Understanding that will hopefully help you understand the importance of maintenance on these proper maintenance of these and it gives you an idea of where to look for and a coil leaks are never fun it's one of the things i hate having to bring to the homeowner at that point we're looking at either a new evaporator coil most likely or a new system it is possible to repair these especially in commercial systems you're going to be repairing these coils because you're going to lose food or products and i've repaired them before to get somebody by temporarily till we get the new coil coming in but fixing these is definitely a high risk scenario. So if you go in and fix the leak here, by the time you fix that leak, you could have a leak anywhere else in the system. Remember this was built in a factory with all the machines putting the exact amount of product everywhere. So if you're having a leak here, you can fix it, but you don't know how long it's gonna last before it starts leaking over here or here, or just heating it up with a torch can cause it to leak at another point. So keep that in mind. And if a customer wants you to fix a leak, they need to know up front before you do anything else. It's a high risk scenario and you may not even be able to fix that leak. Or if you do fix it, it could leak someplace else. And if the customer understands the cost and time involved and the high risk involved and they still need to do it, by all means, you're in the clear to go. The customer's given you permission. They've signed off ahead of time on that risk. And you're good to go. 
And places like supermarkets, where you're talking about losing a whole lot of product, a whole lot of food, even restaurants, yeah, you'll have to get that fixed as quick as possible because you've got to get that system back online. In some of those cases, you'll see those repairs will be there, however ugly they are, because it doesn't matter, you got to get up and running. Uh, but typically, you'll see, when possible, they'll do a maintenance procedure where they'll be able to shut it down and fix everything wrong with that system at one time. But that's a big difference between the commercial aspect of it and the residential aspect of it. These coils, small, it's easy to replace. Uh, we typically just replace this coil. On a commercial system, it's a lot more complex. And also in a commercial system, these tubes are farther apart. So just some of the things to take into account. Electronic leak detectors, using some trace gas and pressure, a little higher pressure, whatever the manufacturer says, do not exceed what the tag of that unit says. And I'm not promoting any one product. I use multiple different products when leak searching, but I do try to use a leak detector or leak bubbles that are designed to work with refrigerant coils because they're typically designed to be non-corrosive. I have seen some people use some chemicals on there that actually corroded evaporator coil and cause leaks. We don't want any of that. Hopefully it gives you an idea what to look for, what's happening, why it's happening. Uh, lots of things can cause that, but understanding helps you know.